evil motherfuckers are mentally and spiritually imbalanced. A dead giveaway is there. All right. Hey, Phoenix is rising. I had to do a second take because I was getting long winded there. So uh, truer words have never been spoken. But let's dig a little bit deeper, and I'm just going to read something. This is off uh, off the uh, book, uh, The First Shall Be Last, and this is a Christian perspective on narcissism. I am not religious. I am spiritual, but I will, I read, I'm an eclectic reader, so I read from everything. So um, this is, I don't know what page this is in. This is location 334, and this is... The first will be last. Yeah, a biblical perspective on narcissism. Since the term narcissism derives from the character narcissus in Greek mythology and usage in the world of psychiatry only began in the early 1900s, we would not expect the Bible to use that term. Some of the terms the Bible regularly uses for narcissism are insolent pride, proud, haughty, and scoffer. These terms, as well as others, can be considered synonymous with narcissism. Proud, haughty, scoffer are his names who acts with insolent pride. Proverbs 21, 24. Prior to the widespread use of the term narcissism, people com commonly re recognize the traits of these people by other labels, such as megalomania, egocentricity, conceit, arrogance, haughtiness, vanity, self-absorption, etc. We can equate the Bible's terminology with the term narcissist used by the secular world, world based on comparable descriptions of the same people. Among many others, this equivalence in terms is illustrated in Wikipedia's definition, which says that narcissistic traits derive from arrogant pride. Narcissism is the pursuit of gratification from vanity or egotistic admiration of one's own physical or mental attributes that derive from arrogant pride. The term originated with Narcissus in Greek mythology, who fell in love with his own image reflected in a pool of water. So secular versus Bible perspective. One of the differences between the secular and biblical approach approaches is that the secular psychic psych world is outside in observing characteristics grouping them and then labeling them whereas the biblical approach is inside out god alone knows the heart and character of of the narcissistic person he gives the person oops he gives the person with that kind of heart and name and then describes the type of person that damaged and the damage they leave in their wake in cascading detail. Here's a simple, uh, there's a chart in here. Observe traits and nature of a person. Okay. Uh, there is, there is an evil underneath. While the descriptions are similar between the secular and biblical world, God does not view narcissism as a mere personality disorder. He sees narcissistic behavior as an evil that is driven by what is in a person's heart. Come on. But the thing that proceed, things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and those defile the man. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and slanders. Matthew 15, 18, and 19. The battle is between good and evil, and it is, it is waged at the heart level. We can see the outward results of this battle through action, actions and words, but God sees directly inside. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 17. Would not God find this out? For he knows the hearts of the of the secrets of the heart. Psalms 44, 21. The problems, uh, problem source and solution start in the heart. The mind simply serves the heart. That's one explanation for why a narcissist can appear to be self-contradictory by quickly taking the opposite position of something he, uh, something he said or she said. Their mixed signals display the mixed motives of his of their heart. People who are casually around narciss narcissists may only find them annoying. However, those hurt by narcissists are quite aware that there is something deeper and underlying evil. And we've all, all of us who have dealt with narcissists in some way, I've said gang stalking is a sorority for cluster B personalities and their flying monkeys. Okay. Um, 
because basically it's it, when you look at gang stalking and as being a targeted individual, it's multiple narcissists or cluster B personalities who are ganging up on you using what's available in society in your community. Okay. So, um, when the sister talks about, you know, these people being murderous and having, having issues, it's an issue with their heart. This is who they are to the core. That's why I say cluster B personalities, because you are dealing with a cocktail of demons, right? The most high God knows, knows that. I mean, that's what he taught me when I was on the streets and I was struggling through this and these people were trying to kill me. People who are casually around, casual around a narcissist may only find them annoying. However, those hurt by narcissists are quite aware there is something deeper in underlying evil. And we've all said this. Narcissists typically don't see themselves as evil because they are what they are. Right? They are what they are. A dog does not know the difference between... Um, the, uh, there's unless they're taught a dog does not know does not care if you're obese doesn't care if you're skinny when they're smelling they're smelling your vibration your word is sound so when you say something to them they're coding they're uncoding that vibration and that vibration turns into something for them now if you have animals talk to each other telepathically when you can get on that vibration, you too can understand what they're saying and talk with them. It's a real thing. Uh, narcissists typically don't see themselves as evil. In fact, they usually see the contrary in themselves. But their victims are eventually forced to see them for what they are. Narcissists, part of a, a narcissistic personality disorder, the cluster B personality disorder, is that they are severely delusional. Case in point, um, I had a stalker who believed that I was in love with her. And that's why I said this is a cocktail. This person was diagnosed with borderline personality, but is also has high sociopathic uh, tendencies, I guess you could say, right? So it's like once you're whatever they're, and it really it's hard to diagnose them because I had a, a friend in the U, United uh, UK and her daughter was diagnosed. Okay, now they're diagnosing her with this and this and this and this. And pretty much because when we're dealing with our medical professionals, they're trying, professionals, they're trying to diagnose, trying to get the symptoms so that they can give it a medication. You know, with this, you need an exorcism. You need an exorcist. You know, so. Anyway, hope this helped. Uh, that's all I'm going to read, but um, it's uh, the it's the the first will be last a biblical let's see here a biblical perspective on narciss, narcissism by D.C. Robertson, and that's Roberts and Son, all one word. All right, Coach T out. Hope this helped. Phoenixes, remember your blessings are in your ashes. Right.